Shut up and sit down. Hey, hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Dope and Dharma. This is the Dharma Time Hour. Um, is today today's Thursday, so it's not Tuesday. Unless Wait, you're did you just look on your arm. Yeah, why? No, I looked at my watch. Oh, I thought you looked on your arm like you had it tattooed. <laughs> like no, no, I haven't gotten to that point in my life yet where I'm tattooing the days of the week. Um, maybe you know who knows. Uh, we'll see. Uh, anyways, welcome to Dharma Time. And as I said, this is not Tuesday unless you're listening to this on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> well, Richard, I don't know if this is going to be what you think it is, but. Um, anyways, this is Dharma time. Um, we, That's awesome. uh, <laughs> welcome Richard. Yeah. Uh, welcome for those of you who are just tuning in here. Um, you can watch us live and participate in the discussions on, uh, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, yeah. uh, live under dope and Dharma. Uh, and if you would like to listen to this at your leisure, you can do so through any podcasting platform. Um, and one of our longtime listeners, Richard Coleman, who, uh, I think he watches on Facebook, just posted and said uh, he's ready to join the broadcast. So that was what we're commenting on. Um, and I think, you know, he's he's really into politics, which we're going to be doing that tomorrow, I believe, Richard. So be sure to join in tomorrow because I think we'll have a political talk, even though I do have my star sprinkled banner tank top on today, I guess. Yeah, you got it on the wrong day. Yeah, I know. I was cleaning through my closet, man, and I was getting rid of a bunch of stuff. And I found like this whole section of shirts that I just haven't used in so long. Yeah. Um, you know what it is? I'm, I guess I'm hard to buy for. So whenever my wife or my kids get me anything for birthdays or Christmas or whatever, it's always shirts, which is weird because I don't really use half of them because they never fit. That's but, a dad thing, bro. Yeah, it's like the go-to. I don't wear ties, so it's shirts. That's what they give me. Um, anyways, I digress. I think I get you shirts, too. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you got me tank tops, and I, I think only one of them fit. What? Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I still have them in my closet. I keep them for my, uh, for sentimental reasons, I guess. They should be kept for sentimental yes. reasons. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, <laughs> so Richard says I'm looking awfully Republican today. Why? Well, I assure That's you. What I'm I, 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 rec- I recommend you you wear that tomorrow. Wear it tomorrow. Right? It, it's sad that an American flag makes you look Republican. Yeah, I know, that, right? That's a very sad comment, actually. I agree, because uh, I'm but not Republican. That's where we're at right now. Right, Ex- and know? that's where we're at right but, now. But I am American, right? Yeah, but he's um, not wrong. He's not wrong. If, if no, he's not wrong at all. Is, 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 has a flag off. And, and I'm guilty of it. Yeah. If I drive through a neighborhood and I see an American flag on somebody's yeah. house, I automatically wow. assume Republican. Wow. I, well, I, I don't think I should, but I do. You shouldn't, because I got two American flags. Yeah. One in the front, one in the back. Well, you do lean Republican in many, many things. Well, so do I, though. Like, we, we, I, lean I don't know. I don't lean Republican. Just the Democrats are like trying to run away from me. Yeah. Too like, sure. it's, 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 it's like I went into the store, came back out, and they all left. Yeah, well, <laughs> where'd they go? <laughs> that'll be tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Um, right. we'll be talking right. politics tomorrow. I'm sure we're right. going to address the debate and other things right. that happen. So, right. uh, but as of today, uh, something a little bit different actually, uh, right. than that. Um, right. I want to talk about what is a man, right? And I chose that specific. I'm, I'm a little guilty at the moment for clickbait, uh, because I know that the, the what is a woman debate raged on and probably still is. Um, so I wanted to kind of play off of that a little bit, but I, I, I think we're going to take it down. You know, this has nothing to do with trans, just so you know. Um, well, the reason why I'm asking is, is I, I watched a video earlier and, uh, the video was kind of a, a, a guy talking to a group of, of, of other young men. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about, I think the, the initial topic to get things started was toxic masculinity which we've discussed before. Um, and that led into kind of just boyhood, right? Like growing up and, and becoming right. a man and what is it? And what do people think about it? What do they talk about it? Right. Um, and I've had this discussion many times with mm-hmm. other people as well, mainly because I am a man and I'm trying to raise a young man. Right. So it's a subject that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, and one of the things that I'm noticing as I've gotten older and as I'm dealing with younger generations is – uh, in a, in a sense, we're kind of screwed. It feels like sometimes, right? It feels like we're 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 expected to do so many things, but we're not really taught how to balance any of them. You know what I mean by that is is on one hand, I think oftentimes when people think manhood, they think stoicism and and leader, as he put here, leader, protector, providers, right? Um, but at, in the same breath, we're also discouraged from doing some of those things 
mm-hmm. and we're encouraged to be more sensitive and more empathetic, more connected, you know, things of that nature. Uh, but we're not really told how to balance it. We're not really told what they look like. Uh, we get punished for both, right? If we're too stoic and too leader, too protector, then we get told we're toxically masculine. Mm-hmm. But then if we go too far in the other direction, then we get called weak or we're not man enough or whatever, you know, be a man, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I just think it's an interesting topic. You know, I don't know. We don't have anything written down, so we're going to see where this takes us. Uh, I think it should be interesting. Uh, but first, before we get started, let me ask you. Yeah, ask me some questions. Well, I want to ask before, like, as an umbrella for this whole conversation, okay. um, where on the spectrum would you consider yourself? Because I'm trying to see if we're. <laughs> yeah, I am on the spectrum. Thank you very much for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. I but I mean, it. like, on, on one <laughs> end, you know, it's typically you have the nerdy guys or maybe the more feminine, okay. you know, the yeah. ones that nobody would really deem as masculine. Right. And then on the other hand, you have the stereotypical masculine, which would be athletic and like maybe a ladies man, you know. The, the the chads as they call them these days right, right, right. um you know obviously you and i both know at our age and everything else most people kind of fall in the middle however society or our peer groups like to label us as something would you consider yourself closer towards which which end would you consider yourself you know, closer it, towards that's a really good question because i've always considered myself 100 percent in the middle on that 100 percent, even as a kid um in other words um I may not appear to be athletic, but I was very good at whatever I did. You know what I mean? Uh, very right. good at baseball. Um, that was my sport. Um, you know, but, but, but athletically, even like when I played football, like street football, when we played street football or, or in high school, we'd play on the weekends, you'd go to the, you know, and, and play. I, mean, I was good at that. You know what I mean? Right. When I did that, but um, I did other things that, distracted being part of team sports obviously it's not time to get in all that but sure. but uh but i liked it i like competition i liked athleticism uh i don't i'm not a practice kind of person uh and all that not a workout kind of person just just naturally i just if i if i do something i'm, I'm relatively good at it just just one of those just natural gifts <laughs> I guess I am. If I do it, no, I'm good. No, at it. It's funny. You should True. say that because if True. I'm honest with you, that's mm-hmm. exactly how I think I would peg you. Yeah. Um, I would peg you as close to the middle. Now, granted, I, I didn't know you uh, right. like I've met you, right. you know, as an older man right. and as somebody who's already done the work of recovery. Right. Uh-huh. And what I mean by that is just recovery. You do a lot of self-reflection, brutal right. honesty and stuff. So I don't know who it was before, but the, the guy I see now, I wouldn't say that you're overly athletic, but I would no. say you're competitive. Right. Um, you're definitely far more in touch with who you are as far as self-awareness right, than most right. dudes would be. Right. Like I would, I would probably classify you as close to the middle as, as I've yeah, seen. Yeah. I, I mean, so middle. I, I, I really do feel like I, I, cause I've always joked that I'm very much a Libra when it comes to that. Um, and then the nerdy part. Yeah. I, I like, there's some nerdy things I like, and then there's some things that, that like the real nerds are into that. I'm like, Oh my God, I, 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 I don't even get it. I don't even, I'm not into it, right. but it's not because I don't want to be into it. I just, you just, I don't get it. Right. But, right. but I do like some things that would be considered nerdy. I'm, I'm naturally good at mathematics. I'm just, uh, naturally, uh, like I liked chess as a little kid. Uh, now <laughs> yeah, did I do same. chess older than a little kid? No, but I liked it. Uh, right. I liked, uh, I like the competition of it. Um, I like the, the brain thinking, I like brain things, you know, I like cerebral contests um right. hell i, I like to uh, like drama bro I, if, if 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 the theater department wasn't full of the kind of people that it was <laughs> right i would have loved the theater department but right. i think i'm the only person that ever got voted to be a president of, of, of a drama club and never went to one meeting how the hell oh, did wow. that happen wow yeah that, that's weird dude i never went to one of those meetings i hate it all by the way if you're if you were in it in my high school and you I hated every single one of you. I'm sorry. You were you were all just so freaking annoying and dorky to me. Right. Why you guys did that and put me in that situation until I urinated on all their on all their costumes because they wanted to do Grease and I'm not a singer. Um, then I got uh, kicked out and uh, Jan Slusher. Uh, nice. You know, thanks for taking my apology when I when I got sober and uh, you weren't very nice to me and <laughs> she didn't accept my apology <laughs> when I went by the high school. But but that's the kind of things. Like I was into things that normally those aren't cool things to be into, but I liked it. But right. the people, I didn't necessarily like the people that were 
liking the same things I like. So it was hard sure. to find a cool I, group I can relate that to like that. that stuff because, <laughs> yeah. you know, they were... I can relate to that more now as an adult than I could as yeah. a kid. Um, yeah. So uh, before I get to mine, yeah. where I feel like I, I fall into the, on the spectrum, I guess. Right. Uh, Richard, I see your, your, your question here, and he says, uh, when an enemy comes to conquer a people, who do they come for? Elderly women or and children or healthy, capable men. Right. Um, I would say, uh, you know, not to get too deep into the weeds on that one. I would say back in the day, uh, yeah, like they needed the Spartans and things of that nature. But in today's world, everything's so digital. I think it doesn't really matter. Um, I, got, I, I, go ahead. I got an answer for you. Can I answer for you before you answer of sure. what I think? Your answer? Is? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, let me finish with Richard's comment. Then. Oh, I'm just, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Rich, what I mean by that is just uh, uh, in a very binary, black and white thinking from from olden days. If you're talking about physical battle, then yes, I agree with you. Uh, but I think we're so far removed from that. I, I don't think there's a lot of those types of like taking over. Yet, yeah, granted, I I I fully know I'm saying this during a Ukraine Russia you know skirmish at the moment, but. Um, I don't think that you have to be very virile or strong or masculine to press a button and have a drone drop a bomb on somebody. Like I don't, I think that we're, or uh, um, cyber attacks and things of that nature. I think there's a lot of people in different countries who um, are like attacking us, for instance, and you probably wouldn't classify them as virile because they're behind a keyboard and they're destroying our infrastructure. So I, I think that's a multifaceted question that maybe we'll get to another day. But uh, I, I all right, so what's your guess? Richard, since he, he might know history really well. If Am I wrong, Richard? Uh, and this is for you. A question back to you. Um, in the Holocaust, did they not kill the women and children first because they found them to be more useless when it came to some of the work they were having them do? Am I wrong to, to have that memory? Good question. Let's see what he so, says. So uh, yeah. while we're waiting on his, yeah. mm -hmm. we're waiting on his answer. So what Can was I give your you, – Okay. Sure. So, all right. So here's how I look at you. Physically, you were given all the gifts of the Chad, right? You were given the Chad body, the Chad looks, the Chadness, right? But you got blessed with the brain of a nerd. So to me, your brain – is 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 perfect for i think you're in the middle as well i think your brain is perfect for the nerd side and then your body is perfect for the 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 jock side um yeah. the more sustainable version the more sustainable version of you is the nerd part the nerd right. part is your more sustainable version because the world doesn't want to view you as the nerd part so i think that challenge is always going to be there for someone like you because the, the right. world is going to typecast you see i'm not in a typecast situation right. right i look very average i look very middle so to me i right. can walk around and be in middle and in, in all i want sure you on the other hand are, are are visually someone that we like to typecast or we like to to make a judgment about knuckle, about. knuckle dragger <laughs> yeah you don't appear to be as intelligent or emotionally available as you are because that's not how we have put that in our heads, right? In our right. heads, we have we have we have manipulated ourselves to believe that people that look like you are not of that, which is wrong. Which is right. wrong. And, 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 and so what from this topic I hope we get to is that just as those of you out there that are on the natural nerdy side and feel like people that look like Trinity have judged you incorrectly and bullied you, I want you to know that we have all judged people that look like Trinity incorrectly and bullied them in a very different way. You know, our bullying yeah. is a very intellectual bullying, but it's still bullying. And then our bullying when we're being physical is more physical. Right. So our, our, right. our bullying is, is still bullying. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, Richard, I mean, Richard answered the question, by the way. Uh, yes. Richard said uh, you are correct. If a man wasn't deemed as useful, they were executed. That's also mm -hmm. why they were separated. The men that were useful were told they would be reunited with the families if they did the Nazis bidding. But rarely was that the case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank so I, I think um, it's interesting that you should touch on that. Right. I guess we'll go ahead and just get right into it then. Okay. Um, uh, so from my perspective, I would say that growing up, I was, I, I wasn't going to word it that way, but I think you kind of nailed it right on the head in the sense that, yeah, I, I played football, whatever. I was physically kind of a, a bigger kid a lot of the times. Um, I'm definitely guilty of some episodes of bullying and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but I never fit in with those people because a lot of my friends that were the, the jocks and stuff, they were getting like C's and D's and barely passing classes to where I was getting A's. 
So there was always a weird barrier between us to where I, I didn't, uh, if I was, <clears throat> excuse me, if I was hanging out with them, there was a part of me that never intellectually really felt connected to them because they would, they, they would find joy in weird things that I just didn't really relate to. But on the flip side of that, uh, <laughs> whatever, man, I, I knew I hesitated to say that because I knew he was going to bring that up. Anyways, um, for those of you that don't know, Richard Coleman that's watching on Facebook Live is an old childhood friend or yeah. acquaintance of, of Trinity. So he knows Trinity when Trinity yeah. was a bully. But go ahead. Trinity. <clears throat> so uh, but on the flip side of that, <laughs> the other kids who intellectually I fit in more with that I enjoy talking to and, and having kind of more intellectual discussions, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't accept me either because they viewed me as like one of them kind of a thing. Right. Cause I was able to move in right. between those circles. Uh, so for me, it was very hard to kind of fit in. I had a very interesting high school career in the sense that I, I, I got along with everybody, but I didn't fit in with anybody. Right. Um, so I don't, I don't have those fond high school memories that everybody has, but it's not because I was plagued as a victim. Right. So it's not like I had this terrible high school career that I just don't want to revisit. I just didn't have the really great time because I just never really felt, a kinship with any of the groups right. i was cool with a lot of people but i never felt truly connected to a lot of people um mm -hmm. and so for me that's kind of why i wanted to have this discussion right because the the show that i was watching you know there's a couple points that that you know made uh, interesting you know uh sense to me i guess and that is number one we get stuck in this weird paradigm of like what is a man right like yeah seems like a lot of people have opinions on that and i don't mean right. in the sense of the trans debate right now of what is a woman mm -hmm. i mean is a man stoic or is a man thoughtful you know is a man a leader or is he the like we you know it, does a man have to earn his manhood because right like we always hear it's like your journey into manhood or you know i'm gonna take your man car that kind of stuff towards oftentimes with women they just earn it they, they get it the second they turn you know 16 right you're a woman now like right and nobody says that you're going to take your woman card away from you. Like it's So their value is kind of inherent to whereas ours is more performance based. Mm. And I think that that performance based uh, uh, attention hurts us a lot. Even from an early age, we learn that our value is about how we perform versus just who we are in general. Right. And then I think that that's exacerbated as we get older, because then when you look around, you know, society continues to perpetuate that. Right. Um, and so uh, uh, then the, the other part that I thought was really funny and, and we need to work into our conversation somehow that I thought was hilarious. And it was, it was like a, a it was a perfect uh, microcosm of the issue that we have. So on this, this screen, right. There was uh what three, I think it was like four or five young men. And there was a guy in the middle the guy in the middle is a psychiatrist, right. So, but he's a really good one. Like I really like listening to him. Right. He manages to turn, a bunch of psychiatry mumbo jumbo into like real applicable kind of like easy digested stuff. Um, and he tackles a lot of really hard subjects, but anyways, one of the guys made a comment, you know, and, and showed some vulnerability. And then he was asking the rest of the guys, like, okay, well, so what do we do now? Like, how do we support him? How do we, what's he asking for or whatever? And there was dead silence. None of the guys had any idea how to emotionally support this guy or mm -hmm. how to relate or how to build connection. They just, were lost and then one of the dudes <laughs> broke up the whole uh you know seriousness of it by actually joking and saying i feel like if there was a bunch of women on here they would all instantly know how to answer that question there would be no silence they would immediately know how to comfort and, and, and all these other things but because we're all a bunch of dudes we just don't know and and i laugh because it's true i feel like i don't think the average dude uh, even me I, I was as well adjusted as I feel like I've gotten to over the years. Uh, one of the things that I've always struggled with less so now, but I still, if I'm honest, it's still a weakness of mine hmm. is my inability to be in touch with my own feelings or knowing how to support and empathize and everything else with the, those around me. And part of that is because my whole life as a dude, especially uh, visually, as you said, leaning more towards the virile side, um, it's never been expected of me. It's never been taught of me. It was, it was just, you know, go out there and lift this heavy thing or hit this person or, you know, right. you know, be stoic, that kind of stuff. So those are the, the two main kind of things that I'm thinking of. So what are your thoughts on either one of those? Yeah, no, I agree with you. And then, you know, look, all 
and, and we're going to speak from a male perspective, women that are listening or, or watching because we're men. All right. Yeah. So and, and we, women feel free to comment. We, by the way. we may be wrong, you know, but we can only speak from our perspective. And, and oddly, when we all speak, we kind of all get, we kind of all were raised. If, if is g- generations tend to understand each other, uh, right. you know, really easy. So, so even though you're a younger generation, Trinity, than me, you still, sure. you still qualify <laughs> the, uh, um, so yeah, we tend to pigeonhole each other, right? So real early on, yeah. guys, we we all play together, right? The younger yeah. the younger you find the kids, the more they all play together. Yep. And then is is you know around nine, right? From between nine and eleven, yeah. you st- we start separating ourselves. Uh, yeah. Those that really enjoy the competition, and those that don't enjoy it as much because they lose all the time, right? <laughs> uh or they don't get picked and i yeah. and i and i could see that you know uh, i wasn't the kid that didn't get picked even though i was underdeveloped i was always underdeveloped right i was always you know uh a shorter kid right you know that, that that was that was the norm so my i knew real quick early on despite my ability to play with the bigger kids and despite my ability to challenge them and 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 to be amongst that i think that's why i fought more and that's why i developed fighting skills and that's why i developed uh, 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 I started working on different talents that I had, and I think a lot of us have done that. We we start finding what what talents do I have, or what what uh, what is it within me that works because I can't do that. Right? I don't get it naturally. Like I had to prove myself. So being always the new kid, which is always an issue, right? Because every three years we moved, so every three years I'm in a new school. So that the proving yourself in some of the way the the the, the ways of kids is always physical. That's 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 the way that you prove yourself. You know, am I stronger? Am I faster? Am I am I am I funnier? Right. And when I found oh, funny, oh that that whoop, I can get that immediately. I can just <laughs> yeah. be the center of attention. I I could just do some things, and it can cause a disruption. So listening to what you're saying about that, I think that we all get pigeonholed so young that by the time the females really enter our lives, right after eleven, pretty much, right, even though they're in our lives before that, they don't become as important until. 12, 13, sure. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Then yeah. they become That's when we start important. noticing them. Right, yeah. right. They become very important. But by that time, we've already kind of went down a path, right? Now, yeah. some kids, when you hit that, you hit a point, like going from middle school to high school, where all of a sudden puberty starts kicking in. And then puberty gifts some people tremendously, right? <laughs> to the yeah. point where they may have felt and this is this is my 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 theory on the linemen of America. The linemen is that a lot of the linemen are a lot more emotionally available people than anyone would ever assume them to be. The biggest of us all are so emotionally available because they've had, they've dealt. They were the fat kid. Yeah, they were the kid that felt picked on, and then all of a sudden they got blessed in high school. Where it's like, oh, you're not picking on me anymore. I'm bigger yeah. than everybody, and then they learn to hit people. Or, or be a lineman to defend. And then all of a sudden things change in the head. So they appear to be a certain way and get treated like they're big, dumb creatures. No, those kids were into books. Those kids were reading. Those kids were getting straight A's. Those kids were good kids. They were just, and, and they were, they were, they were feeling not a part of, and then all of a sudden they were a part of something. And that's why those football linemen tend to be after football. They tend to be successful after football because they actually studied. They got the, they got the degree that they actually learned in the degree. Like if they took business, they actually learn business, and they become they own uh, car dealerships, they they own insurance right. companies. They're 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 successful men after football. The other types don't tend to have that same kind of success and lose and splurge their money and blah 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 because their attributes were based on different things. So 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 I think we're going a little bit backwards when we look at men today and call them toxic and all that other stuff because it's not taken into account that in the animal kingdom. We accept it. Do we not just accept the beauty of the animal kingdom? Do we not all look at the animal kingdom and go like, wow, look at the gorillas and look how they treat. What is what, what is it so wrong about the animal kingdom that we all want to reverse it or change it? What, when do we ever go into the animal kingdom and try to make the male of the animal kingdom less than what that animal tends to do or tends to be? We don't when, say that gorilla when, is wrong for defending the other your wife sees uh, the manatee mating habits. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What's wrong with that? You know, so so in the in the animal world, we see that in some animal species, the men just simply go hunt, gather, control, fight, whatever. The woman nurtures the child and the woman has a child. 
do we not see that in some species, although the women may be naturally nurturing and, 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 and taking care of the children, they're actually more vicious. They're actually more vicious. Well, I mean, the lions, the, the female lion hunt. Yeah, it, it, there you go. In some animals, it, exactly. In some in some species, some different things happen. Like like uh, the pre, the the praying mantis eating the head off the the other. <laughs> yeah. it's like thank you, you gave me what I wanted. Now yeah. leave. Now, now die. die. <laughs> not, not 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 just leave. Die. Yeah. Right. So 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 I get why if you were if you're born female and look at what men have because our life does look easier. It does look you know just less complicated it just does but it's from generations and generations of the way we treat ourselves we're struggling here just like you are we're low self-esteem and vulnerable and insecure just like you are the difference is is that ours the w- the way it happened there's nothing externally we can really do to it there's nothing well, well, if you do you'll be uh, you'll be bullied or or uh, yeah you know completely eviscerated you just have to fall into you. place you yeah. just have to fall in line. We gotta there's, pretend everything's okay, even if it's not. Yeah, there's no, there's no way to, to, to go around it. You know what I mean? Whereas women, on the other hand, have always had the more luxury. And I think that's why the '80s we saw a lot of shifting because prior to the '80s, the women couldn't color. I mean, the, the guys couldn't color their hair. They couldn't have the the, the yeah. tattoos. They couldn't have the the, the 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 earrings. They couldn't change the color of, of things. You know, so so we couldn't modify anything. You just had to accept where you were at. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas the women, ever since whatever it could. Put the ponytail up, grow hair long, grow hair short, wear this dress, wear that dress. You know, you could change the variation a lot more. Well, now everybody can change everything and like nobody really cares, right? So <laughs> yeah. seem to be on a more play, even playing field in regards to being able to change. However, that doesn't change the inside. We're changing the outside, but not necessarily the inside. The inside is still going to be the inside. Let me tell you why. Because it's a bunch of adults out there trying to figure out, oh, how do I go back and help these kids? Because they may be raised with the same problems that I had. Yeah, because that's normal. Now, we can get rid of some of the stuff, right? We can get rid of the beatings, right? We can get rid of the the, the bullying that's that's really bad. But is all of that bad? That's our judgment, right? Because some of that, it, it you, you require some of that stuff to learn how to navigate difficult situations, to learn how to navigate difficult people, to learn how to... To, to find value in yourself rather than having to find it value from other people's eyes. I have to like what I look at in the mirror more than I have to like what you see in me in the mirror. And I think when we talk about what is a man, like the way you're presenting it, I think we all as, as men need to learn. It's okay to be a man. I, I think a lot of young men that I, I look at today, I'm having to accept them be a lot different than what I was used to. They, they wear, they, first of all, they, they, some of their dress and the way they wear it is like, wow, like that's just like <laughs> so dorky, but like you, you rock it. Like right. to me, if you wore that in my generation, like that, that's pretty, you know, right. but, but they, they rock it. I think they, they, they're a lot more comfortable in their own skin than, than we were, which is a gift, but yet the well balanced ones are able to still be what I would look at as a man, meaning I want to open the door for you. If you allow me to, I want to pay for you. If you allow me to, I want to feel like a protector. If you allow me to, I want to feel like, like someone who can take care of you if you allow me to. But if you take away those kind of things, that is where I get into the, you better be with someone that's okay with that. See, uh, so I think there's a, from a bigger, bigger picture standpoint, I think that, uh, something that the women really, really excelled at mm-hmm. is something that we're we have not matched their excellence. I think that women have done an excellent job over the years of adopting more masculine traits into their being. Right? They learned how to go into the workforce and excel, mm-hmm. and and they learned how to add aggression. Uh, competitiveness and things of that nature very very well into what they were already doing we have not mm-hmm. like we have not learned how to adopt more feminine traits right and, and i say feminine i hate that but that's how society deems it because i don't think, think so. yeah, i don't think empathy is not a feminine trait but no I, I don't i think we're very much uh binary in that sense of no no mm-hmm. are there exceptions to every rule of course there are but i think that because i watch my kids I see it. I've never taught my kids certain things that I see them doing just naturally. 
mm-hmm. right? My daughter is more naturally empathetic, more, more into her friends, more social, more understanding, more, you know, connected and empathetic to, to those around her. My son is very competitive, very aggressive, um, very don't be weak kind of a thing. And what he would deem as weak is the same things that we all would deem as weak. Right. Showing emotions. Right. Like w- there was one time something happened and uh, uh, he got upset. And I said, dude, it's, you know, I'm not telling you not to get upset. I'm telling you, let's, let's express that differently. It's okay that he hurt your feelings. I didn't get, he didn't hurt my feelings, <laughs> but he did. Like, that's what that means. But he is so already trained and I didn't do this. He's already trained by his environment that even the words that hurt my feelings is unacceptable for a boy to say it's that's weak. I didn't know that like somehow that was inherently negative for him to even consider um, to the point where he didn't even want to hear anything I had to say afterwards. And he's only what 12 now. So there's already a distinct difference between the way they approach things. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, my daughter has more capacity to be aggressive when she needs to be. She has more capacity to kind of like incorporate those behaviors than he does. He is very one dimensional. A lot of his little friends that he hangs out with are all very one dimensional. The videos that he watches, the you know, the people he gravitates to are like, and, and I get it, right? I get the appeal. I was a young man once and a young boy, and, and that competitiveness, that 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 uh, aggression, like we have it naturally. You know, right. we got to learn how to use that and funnel that. I, I, I get all that. I just think that we have not done a great job as a uh you know part of the species if you will of incorporating empathy and compassion and and the softer side of things as mm-hmm. well as the women have adopted the more aggressiveness and, and masculine I, thing. I hear you and then i look around neighborhoods and i and i see a a, a lot of guys i mean i get often confused like like i'll tell you what i mean by this sure people don't get don't Please don't get too sensitive on this. Don't get all. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I, I feel like some things that I'm going to say are just like going to get read all wrong. It's all right. I just feel like, you know, we've been given a gift as is, is in our species, uh, just like every other species to assess the situation. Right. All animals do it. They but they sure. do it by instinct. Guess what? We do, too. We all judge. Right. We walk into a situation. You kind of feel like this is a safe situation, a, a harmful situation. Uh, that's a gift. And, and through our lives, we've all had different experiences. So we've all, you know, placed judgment on people based on whatever we learned that to be. If they talked a certain way, behaved a certain way, acted a certain way, right? There's a certain way of communicating that when we were little boys, you would get made fun of if you talked a certain way. You just did. Sure. You know, right or wrong. I'm not in the debate whether it was right or wrong. In 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 yes, I come from the eighties where we were all homophobic. <laughs> it really, I mean, really, that was the biggest I, cut down you could call somebody. Really, yeah. I mean, that just was whether we individually, like, if we would have sat down with someone and had a good conversation, maybe we would have understood differently. But we didn't, you know, because the adults were right there with us doing the same crap, right? And 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 our biggest fear was our dad viewing us that way. At least mine was. Right. So you, so you you had to talk a certain way, be a certain way. You couldn't run a certain way. You couldn't. I, so all these things played a factor. I say all this, Trinity, because you say that we've had a more difficult time adapting. And I, and, and, and I, I don't think that we've had a difficult time adapting in one way. And that's it. I hear more men today. Like if I would just meet them all by themselves, not know if they were married, not know if they were straight or gay, not know if they had children. There's a lot of men that I've met in the last 10 years that I would have bet money that they were gay and they're not. Sure. And, 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 and it's because the way I was raised to believe what is gay, what is not gay was one way. And that is no longer the case. Sure. Like so many men have a very feminine way of communicating and talking like they talk just in a, a very way, the way they move their hands. They move their hands differently than we we moved our hands. They walk differently than we walk. They 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 like their clothes differently than we like. They, everything is so different. It's like, man, I have aged out of being able to immediately <laughs> assess something. And not that it's important. At right. my age, it was important. In the 80s, it was important. It's not important anymore. So don't get me wrong. It's not important anymore. However, what I'm just saying is that I see a change in adaptation that men have been able to have 
Yeah, I don't just that's that wasn't the point that I, I was making. Like I'm not okay. saying that those people aren't you were talking aren't out. You were talking inside. You were talking well, about even, inside. But even those individuals that you think of that right. you're just mentioning, right? Like they're there and they're probably more more prevalent than they ever used to be. Much but more the uh the perception hasn't changed. In other words, there's still gonna be people out a, a large majority of the people they're gonna look at them and still think that they're gay. Now think that, and that's now. what I mean. My, yeah, but as we now. age out and get away, as, as we're gone, Maybe. I don't think that – because I don't think that the, the younger kids that are coming in are they using are. the same – I don't, I don't think they're using the same parameters that we did. I don't think they they're are. using the same scale. What, what makes well, you think they're I, using the same scale? I, I've seen my I've – t- I've listened to my son and then – Yeah, but that's, because, that's, that's your kid. It's yeah, anecdotal, that's not, that's, of course. Yeah, so but that's I, not – But I go and hear his friends talk. I mean, that's all I can base it on. But, yeah, but that's not the um, and, and even on, uh, you know, the uh, – maybe not nine and 10 and 11, but like the, the mid to late twenties and early thirties, I watch a lot of those videos and, and, and the debates that are happening right now. I try to stay as plugged in as I can. Um, and it's still pretty prevalent. It's still pretty like, they're not, uh, uh, they're not the ideal, right? They're the exception, not the rule kind of a thing, right? When they see those people, they're not going, they're not looking up to those people. They're not, uh, celebrities aside right because status is different you know when you have a ton of money you're looked up to because of the money those same people if you took away the money from them and the talent they, they wouldn't give them the same praise that they currently do um you know our action heroes are still typically uh, you know beating people like most of our action heroes in the movies aren't thinking their way out of problems they're fighting their way out of problems with guns and that that macho kind of virulness is still very prevalent in today's society there's there's professional athletes with like like a, a Pokemon backpack, dude. Yeah, that doesn't you know matter. What I mean? But like, they're still like a that, professional that athlete. Not, yeah, there's but still that, praise for beating people. <laughs> yeah, but but they're but they're not the same. They're doing something that we would have labeled one way, and it true that they aren't labeling them that way at all. Um, at all. That I would agree with, right? And, and, I would and agree so it's that changing. Extent. It's changing. Um, and now it's going to take a while to completely make the change that I'm talking sure. about. But that's evolution. Like you're never like I'm not supposed to live through the entire evolutionary process. I'm only supposed to live long enough to be annoyed by it <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then die. Get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But on the other side of that coin, though, right? Like I would agree with you that we're changing. I don't think we're there, but we are changing. I will right. agree with that. Right. But more uh, more to the to the point was when you mentioned it earlier, internally, we are not. And that's kind of the direction I mean, as far as right. um, we as men still see it at, like we're just not in touch with our emotions. And, and and rightfully so, in the sense that I look now at my age and even my kids age, and there really aren't a whole lot of avenues of people teaching us that. Like there's we don't have those kind of like my I don't get together with my guy. Well, I kind of do now only right. because most of my guy friends are therapists, uh, but like a lot of my other guy friends who don't have that circle. They're not sitting around talking about how they feel about stuff. They're not being introspective. They're not being um, emotion. Their, their emotional intelligence is not high at all. Uh, right. And then the argument that you hear or the complaint that you typically hear from a lot of women in the dating world is, oh, he doesn't like to talk about his feelings. You know, I never know. But like we've just become accustomed to that and we have not gotten good at being in touch with our feelings or expressing yeah. them, being self-aware of, hey, that hurt my feelings, blah, blah, blah. We're just we have not adapted in that at all I, like we are so far behind the eight ball on that one right i you, you know what you made me think of when you said that that <laughs> last sentence that you said you made me think of when uh you know how we say we want a uh, a woman in the streets but but a freak in a bed kind of thing yeah right sure. i think that's what's happening to men right now they what 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 seems to be happening is that we're now seeing that change where men are looking a certain way in public, right. but they're really still the same old man when it comes to privacy, like yeah. when they get in those private moments. And, and, and I hope so, at least I hope so for women's sake, <laughs> for women's sake, right. I hope that these guys that I look at that I go like, Oh Jesus, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause right. I can't help myself. I'm not trying to offend sure. anybody. I just can't help myself. I'm just like, you know, it, but I hope that you women are getting exactly what you want out of that guy because <laughs> it doesn't look like it from the outside. But I, right. I hope so. And and I think at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Right. No matter how where we evolve to, as long as both parties 
are still attracted to one another so that we are able to have survival of the species. That's really all that matters because I think that's what we keep on trying to negate. We try, we're trying to negate the one truth of uh, the one truth that we know. We can argue all the other things that we consider truths and untruths, but the one truth that we know is the meaning of life is to have the next generation be born. The continuation of the species. Yeah. The, the, the number one truth that we cannot argue is the continuation of the species. Yeah. That is where we're getting all complicated. It's like it's someone else's responsibility. It's someone else's responsibility. I don't need to do that. I don't, and that's fine. But then don't argue the fact that there's a certain number of us that need to be doing that. Yeah. Our role is the survival of the species. You can do whatever you wish to do that's different than that. I will never, ever force you or belittle you for not wanting to be part of the meaning of life. But that is the meaning. The meaning sure. of life is not for you to feel <laughs> a certain way or for right. you to enjoy life a certain way or for you to be looked at as a certain way or for me to call you a certain thing. The meaning of life is survival of the species, and it requires us to do our part in that way. So let the re let that population still exist. Is, is Well, you know, so as you were talking, one of the things that kind of uh, a question that popped in my head, and I don't, I'm not, I don't know if I have an answer for this question, but right. just on a macro level, right. it, it almost feels as if right. the virile masculine, the, the traditional kind of like uh, stoic, you know, Clint Eastwood, John Wayne, <sighs> that, that, I love Clint Eastwood. Yeah, that that persona, it's almost at direct odds with the other persona that that people say that they want. The more sensitive, more in touch, more empathetic, the softer side, right? It's almost as if those two things, for us, it's like they're at odds. You're either one or the other. You can't be both, kind of a thing. And that's what I mean by women have done a better job of adapting. They they maintain this soft, sweet, feminine, sensitive side while also learning how to be aggressive. Now, granted, some of them better than others, right? There's a lot of women out there who yeah. just are kind of not very feminine at all. But uh, on a whole, they've learned how to kind of adapt it. Whereas we, it's like a weird battle. And it's almost like they're, they're kind of... Uh, um, it is, man. It's almost like one or the other, dude. It's okay. it's uh, not to say it's not possible, right? Because I like to think that you and I, for instance, have, have adapted right. that. But we're also, you know, past 40. Yeah, it's weird that you say that because I think it's the opposite. I actually think the really? women adapted. Like, yeah, I really think the women adapted better. And this is why. I, I, well, no, I think, I th yeah, that's what I'm saying. The women have adapted better. We have no, not. no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I think men have adapted better. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. No, no, I really do. I, I think men have adapted better because I think that, that, that we are less. We're a lot less less judgmental I, I i see a lot less men give a damn whether someone's gay or not i see men give a damn sure. a lot less if someone uh cries or, or whatever I, and i'll give you an example did you see hard knocks last last season uh yeah uh, the of course. cardinals hard knocks yeah uh, so when jj watt retired sure okay he was crying in, in, the, in, in the in the in the in the workout room he was crying when they were watching the video Sure. And he was fine with that. Never did he apologize for it. Nobody felt. Sure. I never heard any comments based on it. That would have never happened. Yeah, but that wasn't the crime. The generation though. before. If you would have cried over something that what we deemed like not as significant, we would still make fun of him. I hear you. I hear you. But he, ex what I'm saying is he exhibited emotion. <clears throat> and that's. Sure. J.J. freaking Watt. Yeah. Uh, he exhibited I, I, emotion. And the fact that he exhibited it and it wasn't made a deal shows that we've made tremendous progress. Whereas in the women, yes, women have achieved what we would call a, in, in, the, in the male world tremendously. And, and yet there's some women that are still in that very, you know, uh, feminine world as well. I think they judge each other a lot more than I see men judging each other that are in different worlds. That's all, I'm, what I, that's what I'm saying. What I'm getting at um, is I don't think that we're as a divided as women tend to be divided. Is this a case though of, of what you were saying earlier about uh, what we present versus what we think? Cause I, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest here with you. Outwardly, there's a lot of stuff that I, I present as, and, and I think, and, and I can reason out. Right. 
But internally, my knee jerk reaction oftentimes when I see something, right. it's not that, right? Like I, it, I follow, I follow you. <laughs> my too. knee jerk, my knee jerk gut reaction oftentimes I would never say in a million years because it would definitely get me canceled. But outwardly, after I've had chance to think about it and I reason it, like okay, yeah, but it doesn't change. My but, instinctual response to that is one of Whoa. but we don't count. We we don't we, yeah, we're, we're 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 at one age and we're a pebble. What I'm saying is that a lot of the stuff that we've experienced, just look around us. A sure. lot of the stuff we experience. Do you see more men attacking men for being very different, or do you see more women attacking women for being very different? Um, no, I definitely would say that women are cattier. I, I just literally said that last week on our show that I think a lot of the stuff in the Barbie movie that, that they complained that, about women did to one another. That, that and and that's kind of my point. I I think that they've they're struggling with this this identity evolution a lot more sure. than men are struggling with the identity evolution. Well, I don't mean us necessarily. I, I don't know if the implication of what I was saying before was strictly men on men either. I'm talking about society as a whole. Like there's a lot of women out there that don't want a, uh, you know, uh, ah, we're already going to get canceled anyway. They don't want a bitch of a man. They just don't want a bitch. They don't want to come home to a dude that's going to be, you know, crying right. and whining. They want a dude that's going to get things done. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so, and if you exhibit that softness, that, that supposed weakness, right. Mm -hmm. Like my wife is guilty of it too. I mean, my wife, there's been some things that like I've tried to express maybe, Hey, that kind of hurt my feelings or whatever yeah. it is. Uh, Cause I'm trying to learn how to get better at myself. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And my wife's my, some things have come out of my wife's mouth before uh, in relation to me saying that, right. that if I wasn't in a healthy spot, it, it would, it would destroy me. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. Like, yeah. there's some things that she said, and right. I don't think she's alone right. in that. Right. I think a lot of women, and and they might not say it, they just don't date you. That's why we have incels, right? That's why we have people who just can't get a date. So they might not be outright saying, "I don't yeah. want to date you because you're a bitch." They'll just be, "No, I'm gonna go with this dude," right? And, and the reason why is because right. you cried in front of her yesterday. You know, so it's like. <laughs> Let's just be honest about it, right? Like, I, I think that that's the thing with us is, and it's not, once again, one-on-one, -on -one, right? right? It's society as a whole. We have not, like, as a society, adapted to men showing their emotions in a way other than anger, right? If a man gets angry, that's still emotion. Like, we, anybody who says men aren't emotional, you're full of shit. Like, we just, we typically funnel our emotions through anger, right? right. Like, you know, because anger is an emotion. Or shutting so, down. Or shutting down, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, or or just freaking out or whatever. You yeah, know, reaction like, or nothing. It's, yeah. it's usually like an on and off. It's explosive, switch. right? Yeah. And, and so, but that explosiveness—that's our inability to know our emotions and mm -hmm. confront them. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. And and so, whenever a man does that, like women just don't know. Like like <laughs> I remember early on, uh, a lot of back when I was, let's call it dating. Um, a lot of women would come to me afterwards and, and say that they were confused when they first met me because they just didn't know if I was into them or not, right, because I wasn't right. like pawing all over them and making moves and things of that right. nature. So they have this kind of expectation of what manhood is. And then when you deviate from that, somehow they feel that you're less of a man some way and you're not obviously, but right. that's what is put out there. And I think for, for us, that leaves us in this weird spot where what do you do are you virile and, and masculine and all these other things that you've been led to believe or are you more it's like a choice as opposed to a combination and that's what i mean like right. and i'm doing my best with my son to try to teach him like i i encourage my son's competitiveness and his his what i would call maleness like i i encourage that but at the same token i also encourage him to empathize and see both sides and and get comfortable saying that hurt my feelings that kind of stuff and, and get comfortable being aware of that type of thing um <clears throat> but i also feel like i'm battling an uphill battle because i see society i see the videos you're watching i see the kids he's interacting with i see all these other things and they're they're really pushing him towards a certain way right and i can see it in him sometimes and he just doesn't know what to do Let, let's put up Richard Coleman's comment of earlier from Facebook Live, the leader, protector, provider. Uh, yes, there you go. So here's what I think about that. This is where the arguments are. The arguments are because you notice he starts with leader. That is that is a subject of argument. And I get it. I get it. Because even in a business relationship, we want 51 49. We don't want equal equal. Right. right? 
Sure. Well, one person has to be the last voice. So with leadership, I think we've been able to now see that we had a misconception about women for generations that thankfully we're getting past. Women can be very great leaders, often sure. better than men. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you watched the debates last night, but I think Nikki Haley had a great comment at one point. So this is where, you know, men react and then women get something done or whatever like that. Men talk <laughs> and then women get yeah. it done. I, yeah. I, I, I like things like that. And I think that that's look, we've opened that door for them and, and good, good, because I think that women can be phenomenal leaders. So I think sure. the leadership part that needed to, that needed to be softened up and, and, and gone away anyway. And even in homes where you would think the men are the leader, like in the Latino homes, like when people go, oh, Latin men are this. And you don't understand. The women really do lead the household. Uh, I would say that's true in every household, to right. be honest with you. Probably but. so, but I can only speak for Latinos, right? So so, so the men, the women are so good at it. They let the men look a certain way outside. But when that man comes up, man, that house is exactly the way the woman wants it, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, so the gift is being able to make it look a certain way so the man feels. You know, because when a man feels confident and strong, they perform better. Sure. They, they do better for yeah. them. All right. Absolutely. So now this, the, 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 the I'm going to skip the second word protector and go to the third word provider. We also have argued that now. Why? Because we have found that many women are actually better providers than men based on the, econ the economics. And, right. You know, based on economics, if, if let's say the man is very physical and, he, and, he, and, he, and so he's, he's swinging a hammer all day. But the woman... She's an attorney or a physician. Well, which one is making more money? So as a provider, <laughs> the guys, we're just going to have to get used to it. Yeah, your woman might make more than you. Who, care? Who cares? So, yeah, she might be a better provider. So you're going to have to let that one go, right, based on the true economy. And we didn't know where economics were going to go. We didn't know what we were going to put value on more. Who would have thought that we were going to value that, like an attorney, more than we would value someone who could build your entire house from the <laughs> ground up? We didn't know yeah. that, right? So now let's go to the middle one, protector. This is the last frontier. Yeah. This is where we absolutely have to feel that we have. This yeah. is the non-negotiating one. <laughs> right? Yeah. If I look, and this is very subjective. Any man that's ever dated one of my two daughters and got one of my two daughters, I said, if she gets hurt out there by someone, you better come home more messed up than her. <laughs> if come she comes home with a black eye, you better come home with two. Come back with your shield or on it. If, if she comes home scarred, yeah. you better be broken. Yeah. Never run away and let my daughter get hurt physically by anyone. Sure. Unless you're going to jump in there. That, so that protector role, I refuse to let up on that. Maybe I'm too outdated. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm going to die wrong as of <laughs> yeah, this moment. I'll die on this the hill. Is with you. This is the hill I will die on. Yeah, I'll die I'm, on the hill. I'm with willing you. to say either sex can be a leader, either sex can be a provider. But on the protector, as men, we have to be able to have that part of it. Why? Because genetically, we were given something. And this is why, this is where we're fighting these gender issues and genetic issues. This is where our fight gets really dumb. Right. There's just a natural gift physiologically that we've been given where. Our, 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 our development of muscle and strength is just different. I'm not saying there's not women out there that are stronger than men because there's a lot of women out there that are much stronger than me. But equal to equal, like you get a strong woman and a strong man, that, that's when it gets yeah. – that's when it goes off balance, right? You you get a, a woman who's worked out well, all done life, that. a man that's worked out our life. Serena Williams but, lost to like the number 700 tennis player in the world. Yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of skill involved in skill set, but I'm talking about just – I'm just talking about yeah. down to the muscle level. Down to the muscle, we know the what testosterone does. We know the definition of testosterone. We know te what testosterone does, right? Sure. So let's not argue that part. The protector is the role that genetically, as a species, we've been given. So I, I don't mind these arguments that we want someone more emotionally available, you know, or, or whatever. We, we we need to be more emotionally available. I agree. But we, we always need to also be the protector because we can't argue the science of nature i i allow animals to be what they are and at, we're forgetting that we're animals there's some things just instinctually that we are as animals <laughs> what, you, Leo said, <laughs> Leo said, what did you get emotional i do i get very emotional i'm emotionally available <laughs> yeah you know? right but 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 if you come in this household 
I'm not going to get behind Dana and let her take the first day. I'm, 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 I'm going to move forward. And, sure. and, and I, and I, and, and I will only allow men in this family as of now, while I'm still living to be with that, with my daughter, regardless. Now it's their choice who they pick, but luckily sure. they agree with me and they pick men that are also going to get in front and, sure. and, and take that first bullet. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, I mean, at the Love same you time, too, Leo. <laughs> uh, we've also learned how to redefine some of those words back in the day too, like the leadership, what is a leader, you know, because right. uh, not everybody, every, not every man in the world can be the dude telling everybody where to go either. Right. Like you can't have a bunch of chiefs and no Indians. So you have right. to have, you know, what is a leader, right? So uh, uh, there's different ways of leading. You know, you right. can lead from the front, you can lead from behind, you can lead, you know, leadership right. to me is just somebody who exudes qualities that you would admire and respect. Right? That's right. That's it. Um, and the same thing with provider, you know, uh, providing, there's different ways of providing. There, there's mm-hmm. financial, of course, which I think where most people's minds go to. But to me, I think that's that's one of the things that gets lost in a lot of this, right? Where where we start thinking about what people bring to the table, right? Um, and I think that one thing that gets overlooked from what I would call manhood, right? right? Like uh, my definition of what is a man is the one thing I like. There's something I bring to my family that that only I bring, and, and that is uh, uh, my dependability, the the rock, you know, the right. the the person who can absorb a lot of the stuff and kind of like, Hey, let's figure out how to get this done. Like the one that kind of brings it all together. And that's what we provide. Right. right? Like, so it doesn't matter finances. It doesn't matter this. That, well, you the think other. the men bring it all together. I, I think that that's a, uh, do I think women hold it together? Okay. But I think, uh, um, what the man provides is that stability, that security, that, uh, that rock is what I mean. Right. Um, like even my own home. You know, I, I provide that as well. That calmness, if you will, that 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 belief. Of, hey, we're gonna get through this. Uh, I'll figure out a way, kind of a thing. Uh, I don't. I don't know how else to. Yeah. I don't know what word I'm trying to put to it. I'm just right. trying to describe it. I guess. Well, here's the here's the here's the you know, here's the one thing that we can't. You know, we we just don't have enough science to back it up because we don't. You know, you and I, we're gonna have to go off of, off subjective material. Of course, right? that's all we got. Yeah, we and, no and the choice. reason is is because there's no there's no paternal culture of just paternal culture right Right. the paternal culture we're measuring the maternal culture with has the mom included right so we're able to look at certain segments of our society that are that are maternally cultured meaning there's no men in there there's no men present and we can look at what tends to happen in families where there's no male present Uh, it crumbles we we can look (laughs) at a lot of families where there's both parents present and then but there's not a lot that we can really go to the number is too small of where there's only the male present, right? We don't have a lot of numbers no. in that. There's not a whole culture out there. No. There's not a whole neighborhood out there where like, wow, there's only five women here and it's everybody's no. a man. But the number one like, predictor of, of, of prison, like all these terrible, terrible things right, right. is if there was a father or not. Right. Right. That is the and number it, one predictor. And, and again, it, it, listen, people, we all have our own personal story, right? So like you, you can't come out and say, yeah, well, my mom was a single mom. There was no man present. And this is how I developed. That's you. That's you. I'm talking as a culture. Like, like and again, we're talking larger numbers. In sure. larger numbers, uh, unfortunately, as sad as it may sound, uh, people tend to do better when they're both involved. Sure. You know, but we don't have them um, where just the man's involved. We don't have large numbers of that. We have a large numbers of, of just women involved. We have large numbers of both involved. And we have very little numbers of just men involved. So we don't really have a, an equal uh, thing to be able to measure. However, Correct. I would venture to say, that it's unfortunate that when we have a household, only one is involved. And right now we have more, like I said, more that it's women. It's unfortunate of what, what that woman has to be to try to make up for it and talk to any woman who's raised a kid. And she tries to make up for both sides. Sure. She just does. I, I, I I think that men would have been able to do the same thing. You would see a lot of it because I, I know men like you, that when you're when you're playing your role, you try to make up for both sides. You try to be, what's up, baby? What's wrong, baby? You know, you, sure. you try to do their hair. You try to comb their hair. Now, as I'm much terrible as it, at it, but I, I try. Right? Yeah, I did. I did it too. I, I was soft at my wife. My wife I still can't like, braid for rough. shit, man. No, I, can't. yeah. But so, so I guess what I'm saying is that it, it, I realized that a lot of you wanted the cowboy to go away. I personally like the cowboy, but the cowboy's got to listen. The cowboy's got to be a little softer than it used to be. And here's the proof in the pudding. You look at old Clint Eastwood movies, it's all 
<laughs> yeah, I know where you're going with this. And then you see bridges in Madison County. <laughs> yeah. You're like, the hell is where'd that go? Right? But he was still a man. Clint Eastwood to me is probably if you really want to see how I feel what a man is, what he should be, how he it's just watch his entire catalog of movies and shows. That, my friends, is what I feel is the template for how men should be. Yes, be the cowboy. But also just be soft enough to just hold her hand, help her get through it. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever let her suffer. You be there for her. You 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 listen when you have to. I don't care if you don't like what you're hearing. You don't have to give advice. Just sit there and hold her hand and listen to it. But at the end of the day, you feel responsible for her happiness to some degree. And that's I like that. And, sure. I, and I think that's a good role for like you say, what is a man is is my job is to, is so Dana, when 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 I leave that she's well prepared to be able to enjoy her existence, however she wishes to enjoy her existence with or without me here, you know, that she feels safe when I'm around, that she feels loved when I'm around, that she feels heard when I'm around and and she will always have food, whether I'm here or not and, and, and a house, whether I'm here or not. That's that makes me feel good as a man. Yeah, I mean, I would concur with all of that. Um, the only, I don't, I don't want to call it pushback, but the only, the only addition I would make to that, and uh, because it only re- because it bothers me because I've heard it and it's never sat right with me, okay. is that um, I don't think you have to earn your title as a man, right? Like mm-hmm. I think you're a man regardless, even if you don't do any of those things. I still think you are a man. You just might not have the character that I, I look up to, or yeah, I you want. might be a wimpy one. <laughs> but you're still a man because <laughs> i what I, I guess what i'm getting at in a bigger picture here right. is i want us to as a society i want us to veer away from this idea that men have to earn their title like their value that our value is somehow performance based i want to get away from that you think we have to earn it um yeah i do can you can people you, can say you it explain, all the time yeah can you explain how that like what is the measure tool there like what is the tool that uh, um, we're using to measure that well i think that that just in we, case I haven't earned it, I want to know if well, I've earned I it. I think or not. we collectively, right? Each okay. individual has their idea, this notion of what a man is. Okay. And if you don't reach that, instead of saying, "Hey, maybe my expectations or whatever," it's you're not a man. To where the the equal is not mm-hmm. true, right? We have this notion of what a woman should be. Like when a woman abandons her kids or does whatever, we don't say that she's not a woman, right? We should just say she's a bad mom or she's this. But for some reason, for man, we take that title away from us. Like that's something we have to earn. And we, once we earn it, we have to maintain it because, uh, you know, there's plenty of women out there. I've heard, oh, he's not a man or, oh, he's a boy or whatever. It, it, it's this title to be given and taken based upon your performance. So boy to man. So <clears throat> boy to so man, not yeah. necessarily not a man, more like boy to man, like not boy to man. enough. Okay. Yeah. Or, or like, yeah, this, this sort of so like girl notion. to women. You're saying there's, there's more, there's more people that that differentiate between boy to man than women to girl to to, to girl yeah to, like to there's woman. not a there's not a, a known phrase of i'm gonna take away your woman card but there is a known phrase i'm gonna take away your man card i got you, right I got you. there's uh, I've, I, I've very rarely if ever have i heard anybody say you're not a woman i got you. but I I've, got you. I've heard no, a yeah. lot of people say well I, he's not now a man. now i'm understanding what you're saying yeah. yeah yeah and so what that does to our psyche is like our manhood now is fragile right it can be taken away from us at any moment and you. so there's this need to constantly perform and constantly not feel good enough. And well, when you don't feel good enough, uh, you're probably not going to behave in a great way, right? Like when you don't feel like you're good enough, you start to get aggressive. You start to go like, what's the point? Or, you know, there's all these other emotions that start to come into it. Like even my own son, I see it all the time with him and, and I do my damnedest to make sure that doesn't happen. But be it my own, you know, uh, inadequacies or, or what happens to him, you know, with, with his peers, it's still gotten into his mind. Like he, he uh, likes to play uh, video games, right? And he wants to play these tournaments and stuff like that. And uh, one day uh, he came to me and he thought that I wouldn't be proud of him if he didn't win. And I'm like, dude, like, you know, my love and my, my, my being proud of you is not dependent upon anything that you do or don't do. Like you're my son. I love, you're good enough as you are towards my daughter has never questioned that. Right. And that's why I said part of it is probably my own inadequacies, right? And my failure to do whatever. But it's also kind of what we're surrounded with, right? We're, we're also kind of surrounded that, like, like in society as a whole is we're teaching our young boys that if they don't do this, then they're somehow not a man. Like they have to earn that title. They have to, 
continue to strive for it. If you don't, well, then you're just not good enough. Well, and I think that that hurts society. Well, I think that hurts a boys. Yeah, not not to attack you personally, sure. but, but attack. Go ahead. We also got to remember that you know he he's watching you what you sure. say when you're not teaching him 100 percent. so that's why so, i said it could be my own inadequacy right so like, he could I be could watching be you him. watch a watch a sport or, or whatever so <laughs> i wish fuck. he never watches well, I, I wish he, he, would, he probably heard you i mean i'm sure that you know i know my kids have heard me while i'm watching sports because i'm loud sometimes oh, um I can't wait for football man see i know so you know they might say oh that dude sucks and uh, you know whatever like that sure. and, you know that that place sure. so so yeah, you should have probably looked at him and said, "Yeah, son, you're not. If you're not fresh, you're last. Get back over there and practice." No, no, I was kidding. Um, but but it, I think I think in in that kind of respect, um, when it comes to competition, you know, if we're going to look at competition, those that have excelled in competition to the point I don't where mean you, just competition. Though. I know, I know, I know, but I'm going to go there. Uh, where we where, where when we look at somebody that has ex- excelled in competition, where we all know that person's name. I find it phenomenal when you see them have two two parents involved and healthy parents. It, it's like, sure. wow, that's pretty cool. Because to 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 be that motivated, to be that kind of an athlete, a lot of times we find those that have come from some sort of suffrage or some sort of problem or some sort of you know a parent that just was on them you're gonna practice you're gonna practice you're gonna practice <laughs> like we find a lot of that right you see you see the uh the, the, the those that have excelled tremendously have that kind of parent uh sure. so it's hard to believe that somebody can excel that great with two good healthy parents and i find that phenomenal and i like i look at that that set of parents and go like how did you do that that's pretty cool right. that you guys were able to support this this child in in excelling without being so overbearing now i'm not in there personally so i don't know if they were overbearing Right. But I look at someone like Dana and then I would think, man, Dana, people probably would never would think that if the kid would fall and scrape their knee, that Dana, Dana is the one that my kids look at and says, don't even go to her because she, she's going to be like, shake it off quicker than me. Yeah, I would never think that about Dana. See, ever. I'm thinking to shake that off, too. But Dana is the one that you can be, ble- dude, you can be bleeding out. And she's like, what? What is, what is that? You're not going to die. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, and she's just so like not what you would think. She is, and I'm right. the one that my girl. So my daughters would tell you, no, dad is the one that you go to. Like if you're hurt and if you're bleeding, they go to dad because dad is the one that's like, oh baby. Girl. Now in my head, I'm thinking like you're gonna shake it off, but I say it different, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And it comes off different because is that you or is that the therapist in you? It, it, I don't know because right. you know uh, they're so. Rolled I think up. the therapist in you understands the impact of that moment. Yeah, they're so rolled up into one now that I I yeah. wouldn't even know to, to differentiate. I, but, sure. but yeah, I, I want to 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 help them through it. So so like when we were joking about doing the hair, they would never let their mom do the hair. Why? Because Dana's rough. So the tangles are like she'll just try to <laughs> scrape the tangle out of there. Whereas me, I know how to hold it from the base and pull to the point sure. where I'm holding it at the base, so it's not pulling their hair sure. while I'm getting rid of the tangle. So it's just I had more finesse. I have more. If I need to take out a splinter, I do it different. She'll cut them out, cut it out with a knife for all I know. I pull it out with a sudden tweezers. Like all those little things that my kids joke about. I laugh because I'm thinking, wow, I, I did better than I thought because I always would question. Did I did I do well enough? Like, was I soft enough for you? Because I know in my head, like you said, in my head, I'm thinking, really shake it out. Like, come on, stop. I think or, that's or the what answer. I say or what I say when they're watching TV, they see me say this this they, they hear the words coming out of my mouth but you, then when it came to their yeah. pain and suffering they saw me behave differently you literally i think you just answered the question i think you just solved it right there okay i think that is the solution right i think that we need to teach our young men like in, instead of uh, uh 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 killing off the masculinity right instead of killing off and and, and uh pushing down or suppressing the competition the aggressiveness uh, the you know the normal things that we we are trying to suppress as society, mm-hmm. I think instead of doing that, we need to encourage, as you said, am I soft enough? That is, I think, the answer is we don't do that enough. I think we need to encourage the softness. It's okay to be these things. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't take away from that, but add to your toolbox. Was I soft enough? Because I know for me, that's what I've done as I've gotten older and I've gotten kids and I've kind of like uh, matured myself. I find myself asking that daily my kids will do something and i find myself thinking before i respond to them what's the most loving way i can put this right right now right and sometimes i fail at that for sure 
However, like this morning, actually, uh, I, I I woke up this morning. I was just I, don't know, I was tired, man, and, and uh, I think I I felt as if I might have snapped on my daughter a little bit. Looking back on it, I probably didn't, but I felt that way in the moment. So when we got in the car, I apologized to her. I made sure I took like, okay, how how did that make her feel? And and, and I think that uh, that's the answer is teaching our young boys and our men to be more empathetic, right? And, and to try to understand uh, coming from a softer place, but without suppressing the masculinity, without suppressing the the natural competitive drive that a lot of us have, the natural aggression that we all have. Because I don't think that taking aggression out of young men is the answer. I don't think taking the angst no. that young men have is the answer. And you're never going to anyways. No, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard we try to govern it and make rules, it's always going to come out. It just might not be a healthy way that it comes out, but it will come out. You're not going to get rid of that. And right. so I think that our effort should not be in getting rid of that and shaming it and everything else. Our effort instead should be in encouraging this. Right. I, I think you just answered it right there. I think that's the best answer I've heard thus far. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like in the, in the woman's side, I guess, you know, you don't want to take the nurturing out of a woman, no matter how, no matter how successful and they become no matter how I don't. hard they may become. <laughs> that's I, one of the I, things I love most about women. Yeah. It's, it's the nurturing and, and, and look, men will say that many, yeah. if, if a man struggles at all is when, when you have a woman that's not nurturing, not wanting to, to touch you, hold you, hug you, yeah. you know, we need that. We, we want that. We, at the end of the day, every, every, I don't care how tough the guy is. He wants a nurturing woman. Yeah. Right. And that's, we that's haven't a, gotten there by the way. Right. Just that's another example. That, that's another we, show. That's the, what is a woman? Well, what, what I mean right. by that, yeah, what I mean by that is we haven't gotten there in the sense that my wife can go and like get love and attention and even physical affection from her girlfriends. And it's totally cool. Mm -hmm. A bunch of us dudes aren't sitting around hugging each other. Right. We will sometimes if we greet, especially when we get older, we're more comfortable mm -hmm. in that. But we're not over here like rubbing and caressing each other and like massaging each other. And just, you know, we're not doing those things because that's still uh, uh, unacceptable. Right. So like in my life, I, I told my wife this before. I was like, look, yeah. man, if you and I aren't like physically interacting with one another, I can go like weeks without a physical attention from another human being. Maybe my kids, you know what I mean? But from another adult, I can go weeks, you know, because we just don't do that. Right. Yeah, that, that might be a little much. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I'll bro hug easily. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and, and, and look, if you really need it, I'll, I'm going to hug you, but it's not an, it's not my go to. The AA people were the ones that freaked me out. That's why I brought it up. Just so well, you that's know. why I became a hugger. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I'm not that dude. I, yeah. I'm not affectionate with my guy yeah, friends. I am. Yeah. Um, but when I would go with you to these like uh, right. rehab and support meeting, you know, right. when a bunch of guys were there that had been yeah. through the program, right? They would come up and like not a bro hug. They would give yeah, me yeah, a full no, no, on no. embrace, and it. No. I felt like what the hell, <laughs> and no, I did not like it. I still yeah. kind of don't. Yeah, uh, I'll participate because I'm not trying to be rude and disrespectful, but yeah. I'm not thinking, oh, this is a, no, I'm thinking, uh, okay, I, bro. Thanks. I think, I think you're one of my only guy friends that I don't do it with because you, 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 you just, there's a, there's an, or I, I could just feel it that you don't like it. Like, you yeah. know, but, but, but I, I see where you got it from because when I hug your mom, your mom's like, don't hug me. Really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, so you guys just aren't huggers. So, um, and, and, and you let us know that. So well, I have to my wife and kids. But. Right. Right. But uh, but yeah, I, I hug my my freakiness is what like I hug and then like if I try to let go and the, and the person's like <laughs> more. Well, there, there's there's some guys that are like really like affectionate. They're showing you. I'm not just hugging you as a, as a sign of like, how are you doing? We're bonding. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm not I'm not there yet. The, I'm, not no, there. I'm not there. Yet I'm not there. Well, I'll do it with you because I'm not going to be offensive, but I'm like. All right, that was that was a little. Here's an example. Here's an example, right? And, and I sent this to you. I'm gonna try to be as vague as I can, so I don't upset anybody. But a few weeks ago, I sent you something as a joke, and and it, the reason why it was a joke is because we're guys. Okay. The, the, there was a cuddle party, right? Somebody was promoting a cuddle party, and and there was a lot of men in the picture with women, and it showed men cuddling with men, things of that nature, and and I think that on average guys typically would look at that and be like nah, i'm good i'm not really interested in cuddling with another dude it's just not i'm not there yet right so whereas <laughs> women have no problem just cuddling with their friend or just being hanging out and stuff i see it here at the house all the time right like back with skylar and destiny would cuddle all the time laying on the on the couch it was totally fine they would just hang out and just whatever but trinity my buddy my son is not cuddling with his guy friend or boyfriends when they come over here like they're not right. 
I'm, I'm not going to walk into the room and see them cuddling while they're playing their game. To whereas right. if I go to my daughter's room, they'll be absolutely cuddling and right. doing each other's hair right. and everything else. Yeah. And that's what I mean by that softness. Like we as guys don't get that and we're not being taught that kind of stuff. And so I think that's where the softness comes into play. Yeah. Uh, if that change happens, I don't know how I'm going to respond yeah, to that. I don't, to be part of that I don't, I don't, I don't know if, I, if, 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 if my grandchild that I hope I have one in the next couple of years, um, if my grandchild's hanging out with his little buddies <laughs> and I walk into the room and they're all like cuddling. Yeah. I, I don't know if nah. I'm involved enough to, 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 to not react, not yeah. respond, same act to that. Same. Uh, and it, uh, I'm sorry, people. Uh, just we're gonna have to take this one just a little slower for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready yet either. I'm not. I'm, I'm not ready. You know, for that. but I think that's. Uh, I think that uh, if that's where we're going, <laughs> we're going yeah. there. Just I, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a tough one for me. Uh, no, I, I would agree, but I think that shows our limitations, though, right? Like, yeah, that's that's what I mean. Is, is that's the physical act? I'm talking about the mentality of being comfortable. Uh, uh, being vulnerable, right, and, and showing that I need affection and I need yeah. these things. We're not, we don't really exude that. And and the the, yeah. the most screwed up part about it is, we kind of need that more than anything else out there. You know I, what I mean? I, I think we got real close to it in the seventies. Uh, the, the free it, love thing. The kids that were in the seventies. Yeah, they got as close to it as kids. I think that's the only generation that ever, as men, did things and not consider themselves gay. Right. Um, I, th I think that free love generation that uh, they did things in front of each other and with each other in, in close in close proximity and skin to skin than any other generation did. I, I think we nixed that in the eighties. We're like, oh, we're getting away from that. Then the nineties well, kids, the nineties kids came back to it with ecstasy. The... Ecstasy helped them kind of get back into it a little <laughs> yeah. bit. And then, yeah. and then and then and then now now we're just labeling ourselves and just going a whole different way. Yeah. But 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 I'm from that eighties generation. They're like, oh no, like because. Yeah. Because we saw what the '70s kids were doing, and like, as much as we like what they were doing, like, nah, nah, we're good with that. We're good. We're good. <laughs> like, yeah. it was, it was, it was just a little awkward. But yeah, those '70s kids, man, they, they're yeah. very different. Well, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm sorry, we, Leo, uh, your generation was just a little bit, uh, you yeah. know. Um, at the like end of the day, that's what we need, though. Yeah, I don't right? know what Mick Jagger and David Bowie did with each other. Yeah, I, 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 I don't care. I don't care, but, but we can look at every rock star in the seventies, and I, they all did whatever. I every single one of them to me, you know, uh, behaved in a gay manner at some point, and we're well, like, that's fine. I don't so care. Here's a funny. So uh, one one example, and then another one, a funny example of what I, to prove my point, right? right? Like what I need from my wife isn't for her to like, you know, come home with I don't know a new toy or something, right? Like what I need is is like for her to give me a hug. Right. Yeah. Like I make me feel yeah. like I'm loved. Yeah. Right. That's what I need from my wife. Yeah. Right. More than anything else. Yeah. I don't need all these other accolades. I don't need stuff. I need that. I need yeah. that affection. But we as men don't know how to ask for that. Well, and then the other problem is when we get it, we make fun of them. And, and, and there's a guy who is the epitome of sports. Right. Many people call him the greatest to ever play the game. Uh, very masculine, right? Like in locker rooms, bro this, bro that. Uh, uh, married a very beautiful woman, had children with her and everything else. And yet there was some videos going around of him and his father kissing on the lips. And all everybody do is want to make fun of him and trash him for it. And yet he's still a masculine man's man. I'm talking about Tom Brady here, by the way. Uh, a couple of pictures. And, and now, is that something I would, and I'm guilty of it too. Because when I saw it, I was like, uh, but yet if it was his mom, nobody would care. And so that's what I mean is there's just weird. Nobody would care. Yeah, I would care. I would care. I, would care. Uh, yeah. I don't like it. Not as much. Like there's definitely more of a stigma attached to it. But uh, anyway, I, And I'm not saying that I I want fathers and sons kissing on the lips and stuff. But That has to stop out there, by the way. If you're kissing the kid on the lips, just <laughs> yeah. stop. Just stop. Just stop. But like, even with my own son, I, I have to, like, it's easier for me to be affectionate with my daughter than it is my son. Like, I have to mentally say to myself, give my son a hug, right? Like, like I have to, uh, it, it just doesn't come as naturally. My protectorness comes with my daughter where i feel the need to protect her immediately and shelter her and you know and 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 pamper her almost towards my son i'm more of like yeah, get out of your boy go do your thing like I, I'm, I'm more i'm rougher with him not intentionally either like i'll find right. myself doing it sometimes i'm like yeah. oh like i'm i'm perpetuating the same things that that i'm calling her issues but i i catch myself and i try to balance it out the best i can with right. 
things that that yeah i don't want my son cuddling with his other boyfriends right no. like you know i don't want that but at the same token i don't want my son to be emotionally unavailable and this like narcissistic right. prick to everybody so i'm trying to find the right. ground but that's but that's why i said that you know, when you were saying that women have adapted more i think guys have adapted more because i think that we can find a lot a lot better balance in that than than the polarities that i see women yeah, and unfortunately, the pendulum on, on with females is very broad. You you know, uh, and I don't see ours as broad. And I'll tell you why. I think uh, I, I think it's so. I think it's very easy for a very masculine guy to have a very feminine friend and like and and them accept each other for who they are. You know, I know I I think it's cute, man. I, the, the guys that are really really ultra feminine and all like I think it's funny. I think it's cute. I have no problem being friends with them. Yeah, you know, me. they like joking with me. I'll joke back with them. I mean, we know each other's boundaries, but I think it's it's, it's funny, right? Like because they're just so different. Like they, they, the way they express themselves, the little the things that come out of their mouth is just so funny. Um, whereas on the women's side, I I don't see a lot of like very masculine women be friends with very very uh feminine uh women you know they tend to like they disagree at some core level that 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 like make them look at like the other one is doing something wrong right you know whereas i i don't i don't see us doing that now i'm not saying all the way across the board and again it's very subjective it's to my sure. experiences um of course. but but uh i just think that, that wherever we end up who knows you know going back to your initial question what is a man uh if you're a guy it's whatever you want it to be to be honest with you, when it comes to like how you view yourself, but when it comes externally outside of yourself, at the end of the day, you know uh, that the the instinctual, animalistic, protective thing that you are is what makes you who you are. Now, genetically, it says something else. It's X, you know, right? You know, you're X Y, X Y chromosome, right? So if you're going to ask me a scientific answer, X, Y. Yeah, an adult up. human male. Huh? An adult human male. Right. <laughs> That's what a man That's is. That's what I'm going to X, Y. Yeah. Right? You got both at chromosomes, right? Um, in, 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 but as far as like outwardly to people, there's this overwhelming, overwhelming need to protect. And it's not just your children or your woman or whatever. It's anything. It's just to protect. You know, jump in front of it, get in front of it. So when you were saying earlier, and it hit me when you said earlier, when you were like, uh, you know, we look at guys and they have to like earn it, right? We say, oh, that's not a man. Sure. Yeah, when I when I watch these videos that are on, you know, different streams or whatever, and I see a woman getting hit or beat or someone getting hurt and beat, and I see a guy like walk away from her or laugh or partake in it. Yeah, I look at it like that's not a dude. That That man has no, there's no man in that kid's life showing him how to be a man. That's not a man. The other day I saw a video where this girl was walking away from violence and, the, and these kids were just messing with her, messing with her. And she kept on walking away, kept on walking away. And they kept messing with her. And then so another girl hit her from behind. So that's when the girl that was in front of her hit her. Didn't hit her when she was talking to her. But once she got hit from behind, then she jumped in and hit her. And then when she finally got away from the, the girls and the girls weren't messing with her, I saw a dude, a little kid, put down his backpack. And they're like, I'm a body slammer. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they were all laughing. And the boy got up behind her, got her, body slammed her on the ground. That is not a man. And that's not a man that's getting, getting, you could, there's no man in that kid's life that's healthy. There's no man. In that, I would tell you that there's no man in that kid's life. Because sure. if there was a man in that kid's life, that, that would never happen. You know what I mean? And, and that's the difference, I think, when it comes to, we need to just admit it. Men, if you're going to have a baby, be there. If not, yeah. don't have one. Learn how to freaking use a condom. Learn how to, yeah. to do whatever you need to do to not have kid, 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 and then not be there for them. Because they need you. If they don't have you, they're not going to know what a man is. They're going to think a man is like you define a man. And you don't, you're, you don't define a man. You know what? You're just a punk. You're just some punk that, 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 that thinks you're cool. You're never going to grow up. You're never going to be a real man. A woman may want to have sex with you, but she doesn't really look at you like you're ever going to protect her and be around because you're not. You're just a little boy. You're just a little boy who's getting old. And that's who I feel like is worthless. You're freaking worthless. And I would gladly tell any man out there that's having babies with a lot of kids thinking they're a man that you're an absolute punk, worthless little bitch. Period. God. This, 
just not very term of time. Period. Um, yeah, I don't know if I would quite. A real man uh, stays, raises, uh, functions as a father, functions as a husband, and functions as a person that handles his responsibility. And if we need to adapt like water and be different because now there's children involved and a woman involved, then that's exactly what we do. That's a man. Um, okay. Um, my opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, like my father was a was a piece of shit, right? But I, he's still a man. He's just a bad person. You know what I mean? Like I, I think that. Um, but he didn't have kids just to have them and then go. go no, he had a no. mental health issues that are. Yeah, that's that's the, but... Well, I mean, from what I know, from what you've said, and what we've seen, right? Sure, that's it. But I, but um, I'm not. But 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 I'm not saying he's not. You know, hasn't played bitch in his life either. You know, <laughs> uh, but but I'm talking about the guys that do it on purpose. Right, you know, and we know who they are because they talk. They brag about it. Yeah, they're just terrible human beings. These guys out there just have a bunch of kids all over the place, and they like it. They think it's cool. Yeah, no, they're, they're terrible people. Um, but I, I think that uh, so if I'm going to answer what is a man, like I don't think that's a simple answer, right? Like I, I don't. I think uh, instinctually I agree with a lot of things that you said, right? Mm -hmm. I, I <clears throat> the things that that it's a very subjective thing. I, I think right. the thing that's not right. subjective is adult human male. Right, like I think that's that's, the, that's that's not subjective. Um, huh. Now, what is a man? I think is adult human male, but what is a a man that uh, I would hold up above the rest? Right, what is one I think that you should try to obtain? That I think is a little bit different, right? And and that's where the subjectiveness comes in. In other words, mm -hmm. if somebody is a poor excuse for a man, I they're still a man. They're just terrible example of one. Um, what I would think to be a good example of the things that we should strive for is pretty much everything that you were just talking about, right? Like the things that, that Richard was alluding to earlier, you know, finding a way to lead. Leading doesn't necessarily mean that you're the one that makes all the rules for the house, but you find ways to lead. Like, you know, uh, um, I lead in my house, not necessarily through giving directives and orders and stuff. <clears throat> I lead by my, my behavior, how I conduct myself. That's how I lead. I'm showing what I expect by the way I conduct myself and by the way I carry myself. So, I'm leading the house in that sense, uh, <clears throat> providing, you know, uh, sometimes I provide money. Sometimes I provide love, support, compassion. Sometimes I, I provide nobility, lessons to be taught, you know, whatever's needed in the situation. That's what I'm providing. Um, and then the protector. Yeah. I'm protecting, uh, I'm protecting my wife, my kids, my family, but not necessarily just in physical violence, right? Cause I haven't had to physically hit anybody in a long time. Uh, so the way I'm protecting my kids is sometimes I protect them, you know, from making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I protect them from internalizing things that they shouldn't internalize. Uh, I protect them from me, right? If I'm, if I'm feeling especially, uh, aggressive that day, it's my job to protect them from me, not to take that aggression out on them, not to be upset and take it out on them. Um, I protect them from one another. Right. If, if, if my son says something inappropriate to my daughter, I step in. But if my daughter says something to my son, it's inappropriate. I step in because I'm trying to protect them. Like, so I think that there's multiple ways of, of defining that. And I don't want us to get this myopic idea of man equals this. It's not necessarily true. Right. Like we have to we have to broaden that up a little bit. Are there certain things that will never change? I, I, I think so. Um, but I think there are some there's some room for uh, fluidity there. Is what I guess I'm getting at. Well, I think is just like with, you know, anything else. It, you know, one thing is what is a man noun, what is a man adjective. Yeah. There's an adjective now, and there's an adjective man, and there's a noun na man, right? So that's that's the difference. I mean, yeah. if we want to change how we use the adjective, then that's fine. That's where the subjectivity can come into play, yeah. how it's used as an adjective. But when it's used as a noun, it's X Y. It's it's there's yeah. no argument there and, and and then so like if we would do the flip show and what is a woman there's the noun woman and that's yeah. x is right and then there's the 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 what is a woman adjective well then the, you're allowed to be different on the adjectives you know sure just like uh, uh you know we use different adjectives of people's names you know like he deboed him like like, Debo. <laughs> like we use the word debo as an adjective we all immediately know what that means too. we know it's what all. that means yeah. you know so debo is an adjective uh you know so so those are the kinds of things that i think that that, that we need yeah. to to understand that, that the dictionary is filled with one word that can have different meanings based on whether it's a noun adjective adverb whatever and and so 
that is where all the arguments are for some reason. We're all arguing the adjective as well. Somebody's like this person's arguing the adjective, this person's arguing the yeah. noun, and and then they're not they're not meeting together because they want to argue. They simply just want to argue. And that's right. quite all right. But I think the middle, those of us in the middle, we understand that this one's yeah. using it as an adjective, that was used as a noun. Nobody really thinks that. We all know, but we play so. along out of respect, and that's the deal. I choose to play along out of respect when I choose to, and I choose to go. If you don't you put me on a test? If you put me on a test, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it exactly the way I just answered it. Here's the noun. Here's the adjective. But out of respect, yeah. out of respect, well, I really don't give a damn. Well, <laughs> that's, and that, you know, that's that's the respectful part. The only thing I would add to that before we start wrapping up here is. Um, and everything that we've been talking about today, too, I, I, like that's another reason why. And we've already covered this on a previous show, and, and that is um, that's why I don't really agree with this idea of toxic masculinity, right? Mm. Like, I think that there's masculine traits that we have, but there's good and bad people, man. Like, I, I think there's toxic people and there's toxic behaviors, and I don't think they're innately feminine or innately masculine. Like, I, I think we need to kind of veer away from that because what we don't understand that we're doing is we're confusing the entire generation of boys and girls coming up, right. not being clear in what we're talking about. And it's confusing them and we're not answering the questions. Right. We're just we're just hoping that they're gonna figure it out. Well, newsflash, they're right. not. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You you're not you're not a bad person because you know you you had blue in the room or pink in the room. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the stupid arguments that adults get into. You're you're not taking the kids into account. You you need a therapist and you need to go deal with whatever's making you feel that way. If you're having those kinds of feelings and emotions based on your own personal childhood, you need to go deal with that. That's very subjective. That's very you. You don't need to pass that that pain on to the next generations. It's 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 not meant to be offensive and it should never be offensive. Um, anyway, I know. Do you got any yeah. uh, final thoughts, man, on uh, what is a man or anything we talked about? I think you're a man, Trinity. Thank you. I, I think you're a good man. I think I am as well. I think you're also a good man. Thank I try to do much. my best to surround myself with good men. Well, there you go. Next time I see you, we'll hug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> put that, put the, you know, I want you to wear that uh, tank top again tomorrow for tomorrow's show. Uh, yeah, I'll have to wash it, I guess, but. Really, um, to be on this kind of show, really for an hour, you can't take it off now and then and then wear a different show the rest of the day and then just put it back on tomorrow. I, mean, I, I guess there's nothing physically stopping me from doing that. No, exactly. It's not like you're going to go work on the car, Trinity. It's not <laughs> like you're going to go do man things. Well, I am going to go out and, and pick up people and stuff. And it is so, dude, it's like a hundred something degrees, man. Um, anyways, right. uh, I digress. Uh, so, yeah, wrap it up. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, my final thoughts on this on this matter are, you know. What is a man? As he pointed out, I'm not talking about the the trans argument here. I'm just talking about what is a man in the sense of how we behave, what our traits are, what's masculine, that kind of stuff. Um, and and I think that the 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 guy who benches, you know, over 300 pounds and and could like run through a wall and, and could go work in a construction site and pull in money and feed his family, I 100% think that that's a man. But the guy who also goes to work and, and, and is maybe 120 pounds soaking wet with rocks in his pockets that can code and program a site and do whatever and, and probably couldn't defend himself for anything, I think he's a man too. I think they're both men. I don't think one's more masculine necessarily than the other one. I think they just exude it and show it in different ways, and that's okay. And I would like for the rest of us to start to realize that that's okay, both men and women, right? I think both men and women judge those people, two, two completely different people. They judge them uh, very harshly in different ways. I think that that needs to stop. I think this notion that a, a man is only one thing, we got to get rid of that. Um, but at, at the same token, I, I think for our children, for the younger generation, um, as Louis was just saying, I think we need to take our pain out of the situation. I think we're messing things up by by you know transferring our issues and our problems and our pain and our trauma onto the younger generation that doesn't have any of that yet you know we're expecting them to react and respond to things the way we would but we're not realizing that the only reason why we're responding to that is the conditioning that we've had through our experiences and pains and traumas if you didn't have any of those things if you didn't have any of those negative experiences would you still think that way probably not and so give your kids that same kind of chance. Allow them to be who they're going to be and accept them for who they are and teach them that there's nothing wrong with them because they think and feel a certain way. I think that would be the uh, the, the lasting impression that I would give here today. So 
Uh, it's been a little while. Man, we went over a little bit, but that's okay. We're allowed to. We make up the rules. So, um, All right, so uh, tomorrow, man. Tomorrow uh, we'll do We the Middle. <clears throat> I don't know what time. Do you have a time yet or uh, a, a no, window I think, anyways? I, yeah, I think I have to um, I have to go to or I'm choosing. I'm choosing to go to Longwood. <laughs> choosing to go to Longwood to go do a little deal uh, during the daytime part. Uh, so anywhere in the afternoon, it doesn't have to be later afternoon, but just afternoon. Yeah. Some, okay. Um, tomorrow is Friday, so I don't have to pick up the kids school. So I'm free whenever. So sometime tomorrow, mid to late afternoon, somewhere around that general time yeah. frame, yeah. you guys follow us or tell your friends, share it, whatever. We're going to do a yeah. political show. Yeah. We the middle. That's yeah. where uh, him and I are both kind of in the middle. And we discuss political topics from that perspective. Yeah. Um, and, and, for, and if we come up with a time, maybe we'll shoot for getting some guests to jump on. Yeah. Some, you know, I would love to have a, a, a conservative and a liberal uh, guest tomorrow. And, it would and be nice. Kind of, and, and kind of see where we're at. So if you're watching this and you're on one of those sides of the spectrum, by all means, reach out and we'll see if we can facil- excuse me, facilitate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Be so- a man. Be a man. Colin. <laughs> yeah, be a woman, too, though. Yes. Um, got a lot to talk about. We had a debate last night um, and, and there was also a Trump um showing on twitter too with tucker carlson that we've probably comment on um so anyways by all means tune in tomorrow as well uh let us know what your thoughts are like follow subscribe share all those things we do appreciate it and uh, at the end of the day now that you know better do better peace